turns out women are pretty generous. To list off a few statistics noted on Market Watch, 55% of high net worth women volunteer their time, as opposed to 41% of high net worth men. And expanding that to the general population, over a one year period, 54% of women donated to charity when compared to 40% of men. And lastly, women in the baby boomer generation specifically give 89% more than baby boomer men. And these statistics just touch the surface of the difference seen in generosity and giving back to the community when we compare genders. This isn't to bash either gender, rather this is to bring some awareness that your tendency, if you are also a woman, may be one of great generosity, which we can feel very proud of. But my question today is, is there a shadow side to this? my observations, coaching mainly women clients to live more fulfilling lives and to put themselves first, I do see a shadow side of this overzealous generosity. So today we're going to be talking about what that shadow side is, how it might be showing up in your life, why it's important to address and what you can do about it today. And as a quick note, I already know not everyone is going to agree with this video, nor is this video intended for everyone, not even for every woman. Those statistics and studies are averages, which means that it may not apply to you. However, the shadow side of generosity is something I have experienced firsthand, I have experienced with my clients, and therefore I know there are others out there who will benefit from this conversation and from a new perspective on generosity and how it may be negatively impacting not only our own lives, but the lives of those around us who are wanting to care for and be generous towards. So first, what's the shadow side of generosity, or is there one? As I dive into this, it's crucial to understand the power of beliefs. This is the foundation on which my work with clients and in my group coaching program is built. In fact, in the group coaching program, we have a new focus each month, and the first week is almost always somehow related to our belief around that subject. That's how powerful beliefs are, and this is why generosity may have a shadow side. So how does this work? We all hold beliefs about every aspect of life. These beliefs form over time and very naturally as we are exposed to different experiences, taught different ways of being from our teachers, from our peers, from our society around us. And these beliefs impact our perception, our perspective of our world. As our perspective is impacted by our beliefs, this in turn impacts our understanding of ourselves, the world, and the interaction between those two things. And all of this ripples down to impact our behaviors and actions. Our behaviors and actions then create our reality. I drew this in a very linear fashion, but the truth is this is all happening all at the same time in various ways. And with this, we can see how impactful beliefs are to create this whole reality. So in this conversation, we can get curious about our beliefs around generosity. What are our beliefs that are causing us to act in a generous way? So highlighting women, again, who tend to be more generous. What beliefs are leading to this generosity? What I've observed and experienced is this expectation, this belief around women in society to be caring and almost to the point of being self-sacrificial, very service-based and putting others' needs above our own, like I shared in last week's video about people-pleasing. And related to this, this also means that women tend to struggle, at least the women that I work with and definitely myself included, tend to struggle with the sense of owning our worth. There are many studies to suggest that one aspect of the gender pay gap, while not the entire picture, does include the fact that women don't tend to ask for the raises or ask to be paid as much as their male counterparts ask to be paid. Many women tend to take the approach, I'm just happy to be here, I'm just grateful to do this, I just love my work so much I would almost do it for free. Again, there's a belief and an action that then builds upon the belief that we are service oriented, that we are caregiving, that we put others' needs above our own, and therefore our needs or our desires take a lower priority. So with today's conversation and the statistics I started today's conversation with, I'm inviting us to get curious, not to say this is fact necessarily, but to curiously consider, are women more generous, not necessarily because they care more for others, although that's playing into it, but also because we are programmed to believe and to take the role that we must be this way. 
that to be extra generous, to go the extra mile, to give back and to share our worth, to share what we have to a point where we're then comfortable with what we have, especially if we have a lot, is what we should do, is what we have to do in order to be a good mom, a good coworker, a good neighbor, a good wife. And while none of this is bad or wrong, we don't need to throw away generosity or our caregiving nature, nor do we need to throw away the values we have about being a considerate person, about being humble and respectful of others. Rather, this is a call to question. Why are we doing what we're doing? Where is this generosity rooted? Is it sustainable? Is it balanced? And are you also caring for and being generous to yourself? With these questions, we may surface some uncomfortable truths. I know that happened for me, absolutely. And some of you saw this unravel right here on this channel. So before providing the three coaching questions I have for you today to consider generosity and your relationship with it. In part two today, I'm going to share a little bit of my story around feeling guilty for what I have and not necessarily being so generous with myself. You know it's about to get personal when I bring up my coffee mug. So for me, this topic of generosity, being overly generous in some aspects of my life and very not generous in others, including with myself, links back to feelings of guilt. And to be clear, these feelings of guilt weren't obvious to me until I really dug into this question of why I wasn't allowing myself to be generous with me. Part of that is because I used to think of guilt as a really tricky emotion. And so consciously or subconsciously, I avoided any conversations, even with myself, around guilt. I was a little scared of it, I was ashamed of feeling guilty, and I didn't know what to do with it. Until one day, I really looked it in the face and started to understand it. This was in part after reading Brene Brown's book and learning that guilt is often a catalyst for change. It's a sign to us that there is some component that we do want to shift. And for me, this felt really empowering. For me, this got me curious about why I was feeling guilty and therefore what I wanted to change. My original assumption about my feeling guilty was an assumption that I would want to give more of my time, of my money, of my resources, of me to other people. And I had this inkling because when I looked at my life, I saw many, many instances where I was very frugal. One stands out in particular, shout out to my Claremont Graduate University friends, where there was a party that was being hosted and someone took the reins of wanting to host this party, sent out a text and said, hey, everyone owes us $4 or something so small because we're putting together this party. And I had a really hard time with it. I forget if I ended up giving the $4 or not, but I know for certain I didn't want to. And in fact, I had a pretty tense phone call with the individual who was organizing this party. And in a sense, I was watching myself do this. I was watching myself grip $4 and be so stubborn about something so insignificant. But also at the time, my reality, going back to that pathway of beliefs informing our understandings, our perceptions, our behaviors, and then our reality, my reality was that I didn't want to share this money for an array of reasons. I didn't come up with the idea, so there was likely a sense of loss of control. I was being told what to do, which historically I have had a difficult time with. And also at the time, and still I am working through this, I was in a very scarce mindset regarding money. So it was touching a lot of my trigger points all at the same time, even though it was only $4. So on the surface, I assumed I am not generous with others, especially when it comes to giving money, and therefore I must want to be more generous with others, especially when it comes to giving money. And then I had my moment <laughs> that I shared on this channel where I totally broke down a lot of boundaries and barriers that had kept me from seeing the truth of my experience, which actually rooted back to a belief that I wasn't deserving. I wasn't worthy of what I had. I had to earn it first. I didn't earn this privilege and therefore I don't want to acknowledge it or face it or use it in any way, even though of course that's impossible. But I was very surprised to see this unfold because it somewhat contradicted what I thought would unravel, which is that I wanted to be more generous and give more of what I had out to the world around me. While this is also true, I'm very excited to continue giving to the world around me. I also realized that part of the reason, in fact, maybe the core reason that historically I have been so frugal and overridden by the sense of guilt is that I wasn't being generous with me, my time, my money, 
my worth and my abilities. I was really struggling to use these things I had been given, to own these things I had been given, and be generous with myself and my own life so that I could go out and be more generous with everyone around me. I realized that not allowing myself to be generous with me in all those capacities wasn't doing a service to anyone else. In fact, it was doing the opposite. It was making me even more frugal, even more resentful, even more stressed in all aspects of my life to some degree, which was really tricky because my beliefs around this topic, I thought I was doing a greater service by limiting my ability to be generous with myself. Once I unlocked this insight, my first step, which is no surprise to all of my clients or those in my group coaching program, was to put myself into an experiment. When we have these big perspective shifts, these belief changes, or a question to a current belief we hold, I think sometimes we like to swing the pendulum in the totally opposite direction. There's a sense of satisfaction there or a sense of absoluteness that feels comfortable because it's known and right. But what I invite all of my clients and in my group coaching program and myself to do is to put ourselves into experiments so that we can learn more about this dynamic rather than automatically going to another extreme. So what I did after uncovering this idea of guilt and how I was interacting with generosity is put myself into an and for me experiment, which I also talked about in last week's video on people pleasing. So the first many days of this experiment, I allowed myself to be generous with me, with my time, with my resources, with my money. I bought things that historically I didn't allow myself to buy. I enjoyed things and took breaks and celebrated and danced in ways that I wasn't allowing myself to do before, unbeknownst to me. And then I saw something really interesting happen. Some of my and for me experiments turned into being generous with others. And yes, this positively impacted others, but I was still in this and for me experiment. And so it was still genuinely coming from a place of being generous with myself. So when I purchased a gift for someone I really care about, and this is backed by the positive psych research, my levels of happiness and satisfaction and fulfillment increased. And in this experiment, that was the main reason I was doing this, although it also served others. An old me would not have sent those gifts because I wasn't in a space of abundance and treating myself and permitting myself to use that as a lens and a momentum for how I can show up in the world. So a summary of this story before we go into the coaching questions for you to uncover your own story is a perspective that maybe, just maybe, you hindering your ability to be selfish and to be generous with yourself is actually doing the opposite of what you desire, which is to be generous and serve others. Potentially, including acts of selfishness and self-care is one means to honor the values, the missions, and the purpose that you want to honor in your life in an even greater way. It is a win-win-win for everyone involved. So with that, let's turn this back to you. What is your story? What might be hindering your ability to be generous with yourself and others in a way that does the most service and good for all involved. How do we break these feelings of guilt and shame around money or around having means of any kind so you can most fully show up for your fulfillment and wellness in life, which in turn positively impacts all the things you care about and value in an even greater way. I have three coaching questions for you to start exploring this topic yourself. The first starts generally. What is your story around generosity? This will start to paint a picture of the belief you're holding, the lens through which you are seeing generosity and all the actions, beliefs, and behaviors associated with that belief, with that lens, with that story that you have around generosity. Another way to approach the same question to understand your story around generosity is to ask, what does it mean to be a generous person? And again, this isn't the fact of the world of what it means to be a generous person, but this is your story around the meaning you have created about what it means to be a generous person. Or on the flip side, same coin, what story do you have about people who aren't generous? Which of course also reflects onto yourself, the story that you have about yourself when you are not generous or as generous as you could be. The second coaching question you can ask in the moment or in reflection of past experiences is to note times when you're being generous or when you have been generous and to ask why? Why are you being generous in these situations? And does that reason, does your why feel genuine or does it feel shrouded by guilt, shame, or shoulds? Maybe a little bit of both. With this coaching question, I encourage you to practice the five whys. So think of yourself like a three-year-old who just keeps asking why, 
why, oh why, and ask yourself that about why you're being generous. So the point of this is not to determine black and white, is this genuine or is this insincere, but rather to say, does the scale balance out where it's a little more genuine or a lot more genuine than it is insincere or propelled by ego or shoulds or that guilt and shame that we talked about today. And the third and final coaching question for today is a check-in to see, are you being generous with yourself? We've already talked about why this is so important and how many times, I would say most of the time, when we are even more generous with ourselves, we are capable of being even more generous to others in our community. So this isn't a selfless act. This actually goes to show that it boosts our well-being, it boosts our ability to give back, and therefore everyone benefits, including yourself. The point of this is to increase generosity all around, not only with others, which maybe you have a natural tendency to do already, but also with yourself, and to see the positive ripple effect that has on the entire picture. So with that, the eye-catching perspective of today's video was a question of what is the shadow side about generosity, or is there one? Is it possible to be too generous? And that was one gateway into this conversation. And as you see where we've arrived, another way to ask the same question or to get to the same point that we've arrived at today is to simply turn this idea of generosity right back to ourself and not only celebrate ourselves for being generous with others, but ask, are we being equally, if not more generous with ourselves? And how might that impact the values and the mission and the purpose that we are trying to live out in the first place? I strongly believe that when we are more generous with ourselves, we can be more generous with others. We can give back more, we can make a greater impact, and live more joyfully and fulfilling lives while doing it. After this discussion today, let me know. Do you feel the same? Do you have a different perspective on this topic? Another piece to add into this conversation? Comment your thoughts and your questions below. And as we part for today, a reminder, there are those three questions that I provided in the middle of today's video for you to ask yourself and get curious about your relationship with generosity. If you find that you do want to be more generous with yourself, one way you can do so is by reserving time just for you, your personal development, your growth, and taking care of yourself. And I have an opportunity for you to do this every month. I host a free group coaching call for Yes And community members so you can join in a space of like-minded individuals, ask these powerful questions, continue these conversations, and savor that time just for you. So if you're ready to be even more generous with yourself in a supportive community coach-led space, save your seat for our next group coaching call at yesandbymarin.com slash experience. That link is in the description and I sincerely look forward to hosting you there soon. If you're called to be more generous to others, it would be very generous of you to like this video, to comment below, to be a part of this community and conversation and subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, all of those things, only if they feel genuine to you. And with that, I will see you next time for another discussion on positive psychology and how you can use these practices and coaching perspectives to positively impact your life. I'll see you then.